Yo, 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 what is good everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for stopping by. For uh, all you guys who've been checking out the channel and checking out the videos, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. If you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please, please feel free to subscribe, drop likes, comment on the videos. I'll definitely, definitely appreciate it. It'll definitely mean a lot. It'll uh, let me know that what I'm doing is at least, you know, right and it's connecting with you guys. So if you don't mind, please do so. Today, I have a little something new for you guys. It's not really a uh, review or a showcasing anything exactly, but it is um, something that I've been looking forward to doing for quite some time now. It's more so on the informative side of things. It is a new series that I'm planning on bringing over to the channel. I'm not really sure how often I'm going to. It's probably just based on how often information that's relevant enough to put out comes, but it is something that I hope you guys enjoy. I'm pretty sure that you guys uh, will appreciate it, especially if, you know, if you're in this community for, for reasons that I am. But yeah, let's get into it. To start, something that actually recently just happened. Something that uh, left a lot of people upset, to say the least. I know for sure I was pretty upset during the release. That being the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low. They dropped on the 19th through Travis Scott's website. A lot of people seem to get through, which is pretty good. Shout out to those who were fortunate enough to, you know, to cop through his site. I thought it was gonna be a shit show. Yeah, I mean, it was a shit show, but to see all of the people who got through, it's pretty surprising. It was pretty awkward because uh, after the release, Nike put out uh, an official statement saying that the shoe was only scheduled to release through Travis Scott's website, which then turned out to be false because uh, they then revised that statement saying that they were going to release it via draw the next day. Come the 20th, a lot of people seem to get through as well on sneakers. I remember scrolling through Twitter and seeing a lot of those uh, infamous got em, got em, got em, got em post. So if you were able to get through, shout out to you. I personally have a couple pairs coming in, so you'll definitely be seeing uh, a review of that shoe here on this channel. Hopefully you guys will stay tuned for that. But. Yeah, that's definitely a, a nice shoe to grab. It was definitely a wild release. Travis Scott then blessed all of the people who were fortunate enough to cop and put out something on his personal Instagram saying that the shoe wasn't scheduled to come out again, which then drove the price up. So um, whether you're looking to uh, you know use the shoe for personal reasons or you're looking to uh, resell the shoe, I don't think you're doing, you're doing bad. I think either are a good cause. It's also a good shoe to hold, considering how well the Travis Scott, the Air Jordan 1 High is doing. I think that that shoe will continue to appreciate. I mean, anything Travis Scott touches nowadays does really well, so shout out to that. But yeah, that was definitely a wild release, to say the least. It's nice to put it behind me, because uh, usually releases like that are really stressful. I'm happy that I was able to get a couple pairs, so yeah. Up next, we got the... Uh, Para and Nike collaboration. This collaboration is usually accepted pretty well in the community. I remember the Air Max one that dropped last year, I believe, did pretty well and it's still doing pretty well. I mean, it's a nice shoe as well to wear. I personally am a big fan of Air Max ones. I was not able to get my hands on that, but I really, really, really do like that shoe. This time around, they're dropping a Nike SB Dunk Low and a Nike Blazer Low. The Dunk is scheduled to retail for 110 and the Blazer for 85. They're scheduled to release on the 26th, so tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day I put it out. I don't think by any stretch those shoes are going to be easy to grab. They're pretty sought after, and considering they're doing pretty well in the aftermarket, I don't think they'll be easy to grab. In my opinion, if you have any local skate shops around you, I would pop in and see what their release procedure is like. I know for one, I passed by some of the stores here in New York and from what I hear, they aren't getting a lot of pairs. So if you're relying on you know, Nike to treat you well, good luck. Nike doesn't really treat anybody you know, well or care for anybody's feelings. So if you're interested in it, whether for personal or for resale, I would you know, not sleep on those raffles, go fill out those raffles, go stop into your local skate shops, you know, just see what's going on because I would hate to you know, pay resale for for, for anything, obviously, but but yeah, that is a nice shoe, and that's coming out on the 26th, so look out for that. Up next, we got the Air Jordan 6, the PSGs, the parent St. Germans. That shoe is scheduled to uh, release on the 27th. 
retailing $225. That is also a nice shoe. I'm not, you know, specifically a big fan of Jordan 6s, but uh, a collaboration with PSG usually does pretty well. So again, if you're looking to cop that shoe, I wouldn't recommend sleeping on it. It shouldn't be too hard to grab, but of course, if you don't wanna pay resale for a shoe, I would go ahead and not sleep on it. Up next, we have the uh, Nike Kyrie SpongeBob collaboration. Together, they're scheduled to release five different shoes. The Kyrie 5 SpongeBob's, the Patrick's, the Squidward's, and the Nike Kyrie 2 Sandy's, and the, what's the other, Mr. Crabs. I think it's a pretty dope collaboration. Um, it's a unique one, to say the least. It's not all the time we see uh, you know, a collaboration with SpongeBob. I don't think the shoes will resell for much, at least not all of them. Um, maybe one or two. I know myself, I'm a big fan of the, of the Sandy pair, the white pair. I'm also a big fan of you know balling in, in Kyrie's. I think they're really, really good ball shoes, probably one of the better ball shoes. Um, if you're a fan of using you know or wearing ball kicks for lifestyle purposes, I don't think that they'll be too hard to grab. But they are pretty nice, to be honest, and they, and it is a SpongeBob collaboration, so maybe down the road or one day they'll you know start to climb in price. But at the moment, at least, it doesn't look like they'll resell for much. I still want to recommend sleeping on it because it is a limited edition collaboration. So if you want it, I wouldn't recommend sleeping on it. Go, uh, I believe the only way to grab them is via sneakers. So good luck with that. If you want them, I hope you can get your hands on them. But that's coming out on the 10th of August, so next month. Up next, we have word of the Nike Sakai release being delayed. Originally, it was scheduled to come out earlier this month. I believe the original release date was like the 17th or the 18th. That has been pushed back towards uh, September, September 5th to be exact. That shoe is scheduled to release in three more colorways. There is a white colorway, a predominantly white colorway, a green and pink colorway, and also a black colorway. My personal favorite among those three is the black pair. I really, really, really hope I can get my hands on it. It's obviously not going to be easy. It's probably gonna be a lot of raffles, but hopefully I do get my hands on a pair. I would like to review it for you guys. I would also like to keep it because I don't have a pair yet. Considering how well the original waffles are doing, I don't expect anything different from these. These, in my opinion, are actually a bit better. The colorways of the originals were, I mean, the green pair, the green and orange pair, it was pretty nice out of the first two to release I think those that, that colorway was my favorite but um these are a lot easier to wear in my opinion so I think these will probably do a little bit better to anybody who wants those good luck I'll definitely be trying for those just uh, be, get ready for a lot of fuckery because that's not going to be a an easy collaboration to get your hands on so yeah up next we got uh, some more news in the Yeezy world. Yeezy Mafia confirmed the uh, the Wave Runner restock for that person who does not have a pair of Wave Runners yet. You have another chance. There is a scheduled restock on the 15th in a full size run. So kids, baby pairs are also going to be coming out. I already have a couple of pairs that uh, that I that I love. I probably my favorite Yeezy to come out from Adidas. I would definitely recommend that shoe to anybody who doesn't have it. It's a really easy shoe to wear. It's really versatile. You can wear it any time of the year and it goes with a lot. So I don't think you will regret it copying it. I know it is a pretty expensive shoe retailing at $300, but it's a nice shoe. It's a durable shoe. It lasts long and you can definitely get your money's worth. So I would definitely recommend getting a pair if you, if you can. We also have two more Yeezy 350s. We have a Citroen pair and we have a cloud white pair. Those are scheduled to release in the fall, sometime in the fall, maybe September or October. We don't know to be exact, but Easy Mafia also confirmed that. There are some on feed pictures of both. I'll try to put it up here on the screen somewhere. Um, they're pretty nice, but another 350, I'm pretty sure I speak for everyone when I say that uh, we're pretty tired of 350s. I think it's time to move on to another, to another silhouette. Especially considering all the colorways are starting to look alike. Like the Citroen pair looks a lot like the Lundmark pair. Uh, the Lundmark pair look like a, like a, some iteration of the Sesame pair. So I'm, I would just like to see a little something different from, from Yeezy. I know that there's a lot that he's been working on. I, I know a lot of people probably seen the Forbes article and all the samples that, that he's been working on. So maybe one of those. 
would be nice to, to you know to get but i for one am pretty sick of the 350s we also got two more 700 colorways we got the teal and the magnet pair those are also scheduled to release sometime in the fall maybe uh september october again we don't really know but same thing i'm pretty sick of 700s not only because of the price point they are pretty uh you know steep in price but just in colorway i don't think that they're you know that appealing i probably hopped off that train when we got the analog pair the only other 700 that i have besides the wave warp the uh, wave, uh, wave runner is the um the static pair the v2 i did want the vanta pair uh i still do but at the time 300 dollars on another easy it just didn't seem like a good idea in my opinion so i ended up passing on it but yeah we have more easies i don't think we'll see the end of that you know of that train anytime soon so strap up and get ready because easy is up to a lot and uh i mean i can't blame people buying them so why stop putting them out also in the world of adidas we had the recent arizona adidas originals 99 cent collaboration unfortunately in new york we can never have anything nice that release got canceled due to a lot of chaos and ruckus that uh just took place i had a couple friends attend the release and from what they told me there was just little to no security it was really unorganized which is pretty weird to hear considering there were 99 cent shoes dropping that were also reselling you would expect there to be security there but there wasn't for whatever reason that release ended up getting canceled arizona put out an official release or an official raffle for the shoes uh, i did enter i still have not heard back i really hope i do I would love to get my hands on a pair just to see exactly you know how the shoe looks or how the shoes look eat any of the shoes i per personally like the young one the most i would just like to see them to be honest i also heard that the uh price chains be due to the uh, demand of the shoe which is pretty it's pretty trash if you ask me considering you know 99 cents to 200 dollars is a pretty big difference and a lot of the people who you know went out for the release only went because the shoes were 99 cents i do know that there are a lot of fans of arizona obviously out there but you know when you put out a shoe for 99 cents that's going to bring a, a larger crowd than a shoe releasing for 200 dollars. so maybe if the original price was 200 dollars, there wouldn't have been that much you know commotion for the shoe so it sucks that they changed the price but i don't know maybe uh maybe the demand will still be there who knows um hopefully i hear back and am able to get my hands on a pair Regardless, there were four shoes, two continental pairs, and two young ones. From what I've seen and from what I heard, the quality is pretty nice. All of the patterns are embroidered on, which is which is pretty nice for 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 them to uh, you know release a shoe like that, that cheap, um, at least originally that cheap. That's uh, that's a pretty dope idea. So shout out to Adidas for that. Hopefully, you guys can stick to your word at the 99 cent price point because uh, that'll definitely uh, be appreciated. Up next. We got the Air Jordan 4, the Cool Grays. I recently just did a review on that. If you want, you can go check that video out. That is scheduled to release on the 1st for $190. That is definitely a nice shoe. I think that it's a great back to school shoe. I think if you want a pair, you shouldn't sleep on it because I do know of a lot of people who are looking forward to that shoe. It is a really, really, really nice shoe. I'm looking forward to beating my pair up it's scheduled uh, to release on nike and a lot of other places so it might not be too hard to get your hands on but still i wouldn't recommend sleeping on it just go get it if you want it now in the world of complex con that recently just passed we did see some releases that happened out there one being that uh chinatown market chuck taylor the uv one it's a pretty unique shoe to say the least you have to like shine light on it for it to change color I think it's a great idea. It's a great shoe. It's a pretty cheap shoe, so it's a it's something that'll probably do well in the resale market. I, for one, would love to get my hands on a pair. It dropped on the Chinatown Market website a couple of days before ComplexCon, and all of those pairs ended up getting canceled due to um, you know bots taking over, as expected, of course. They did put out a statement on their Instagram saying that they were going to uh, re-release those shoes. Um, in the near future so look forward to that i'll definitely be looking forward to that 
Um, they didn't release an official release date, so we can't really, you know, say when, but hopefully it comes soon because I would definitely like to get my hands on a pair. Also, out there at Complex Con, the Amarillo Fear of God 1. That was a shit show as well. It's doing really well in the aftermarket. I believe the last time I checked, it was like at $2,000 and I can't fault it, it is a really, really beautiful shoe. Probably the best out of the bunch. It dropped out there via a stash. You had to like be around a, a hotel. I believe it was like parking lot or something like that and, and you had to like Bluetooth to it. If you were fortunate enough to cop a pair, shout out to you, congrats. That's definitely a really, really nice pair to, help, to, to have. Whether you're looking to wear it for personal or for resale, that is a, yeah, that's a W. That's a really big W. It also dropped on the Fear of God website, and that was a complete shit show. Uh, yeah, I was there for a while, just taking L's and taking dubs, so. I mean, but that's as expected with anything Shopify related, it's just always a shit show. We also got the uh, Nike Off-White MCA release that happened out there. It wasn't really a release. It was a, I believe they released them via raffle. I mean, it wasn't really even a lot of pairs. So I could only imagine how many upset people there were out there. I just cannot imagine paying $720 for a complex con ticket to only leave with a raffle. That's just disrespectful. That's almost scamming, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, they did drop out there in very few pairs. They also dropped out there via a sneaker pass at the uh, Nike Lab Chicago at the Recreation Center. I did see a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but I did see some people um, get lucky through, through that. I would just like a, a formal release of that shoe, to be honest. Like, I think the only real chance I've ever had at copying that shoe was through the Off-White website. And that was, at least for me out here in New York, at the East Coast, that was at 3 a.m. Like, please, Nike, Virgil. I would like that shoe, and I would like a solid chance at copying that shoe. If you don't mind picking me up, I'd really, really appreciate it. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. And that shoe is doing, it's just too high to even chase at this point, so. Uh, yeah, hopefully we all get a good chance at copying that shoe. I know I would for sure appreciate it, but who's to say we all forgot one. Now, in the world of streetwear, we have a new FTP fall drop scheduled to come out. Um, the lookbook is scheduled to release on the 26th, so tomorrow, if you're watching this when I, when I drop it. I, for one, am extremely, extremely excited for that drop. I've been following FCP for uh, for quite some time now, and they never disappoint. I'm not expecting anything different from this collab, from from this drop. If you want me to review the lookbook, please just let me know. Let me know in the comments. I would definitely have no problem doing so. I'm really looking forward to this since uh, I believe he announced it uh, on Twitter. I believe it was like a couple of days ago, like the 24th or the 23rd. And since then, I was I was pretty excited. So. Hopefully uh, we get some dope stuff. Hopefully you guys, and uh, if you guys are fans of FTP, hopefully you guys also like it. I'm definitely looking forward to that. We also have a Supreme leak courtesy of GQ. Probably the only leak that we'll get anytime soon. Um, it's the Tiger Print Wool Harrington jacket. It's pretty dope. It's definitely not for everybody, but uh, anytime you get a Supreme leak, you know you're gonna get eyes on it. So. If you if you haven't checked out the GQ article, it's pretty it's pretty cool. It's pretty insightful on you know the history of Supreme. I know a lot of people only cared about the uh, the leak, but the article was a pretty good read. The Harrington jacket is pretty cool. It's leopard print. It's a uh, it looks to be pretty heavy in quality and in weight. It's probably uh, going to be a pretty you know high retail item, but we won't know until the Supreme season starts. I believe that is scheduled for at least the lookbook is scheduled to come out sometime mid-August. I believe the official date is the 15th. But yeah, we'll see. I am definitely looking forward to Supreme as always. The Supreme Spring Summer 19 season was pretty dope, so hopefully the Fall 20 season is just along those lines. But yeah, that is this week in hype. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like. Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more of this content, please just you know let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. It'll definitely, definitely be appreciated. Videos like this also help me out. I hope they help you guys out. So I'll definitely have no problem continuing, you know, doing these. Until next time, peace.